Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar, Accelerating Programmer Productivity with SQL. Programmers usually know a lot about the IBMI, their database, general database rules. They often are given tasks of making rather complex data easy to understand for the business users. SQL gives them an easier yet powerful way to accomplish this task. My name is Mike Stegman. I'm a senior uh, data access consultant with Help Systems. I am flying solo today. Um, I work out of the Schaumburg, Illinois office, which is outside Chicago, in case anyone uh, is unfamiliar with Schaumburg, Illinois. I've been working with SQL for over 16 years. I've been working with the um, what is now called the IBMI since its inception way back in 1988, and um, it's a long time ago. <laughs> But hopefully we'll be uh, imparting some wisdom on you today. Um, I see some uh, familiar names out there, so that's great. I see some new names out there, that's even better. Um, little housekeeping about today's session. You should see on the webinar, uh, go to webinar controls, a questions section. So if you put your questions, if you have any in there, I'll address them at the end of the webinar. Okay, and we're also recording. So you'll get a link to this recording, uh, usually within a, a day or so. Now we're gonna start off with a polling question. Okay, just give me a moment here to share the poll, but that's the question that you see on the screen. What do you currently use for your data access? So I'm gonna launch it. Go ahead and click all that apply, the poll is open. I'm gonna leave it open for a few minutes. Um, do you use, uh, currently use SQL? Are you a SQL user? Um, IBMI Query 400? Uh, do you rely on programs? Interactive SQL? Or some other method? So I see the responses are coming in. So we'll give this a few more moments to, uh, <clears throat> to accumulate some answers here. Excellent. Beautiful. Still coming in, excellent, excellent. I think we have a good group here. People responded fairly quickly. A lot of the, <laughs> a few stragglers coming in, but that's great. <clears throat> awesome. Yeah, it's always interesting to know your audience, right? If you're coming from Query 400 or programming, um, you know, there's uh, a lot of a lot of people who do, who use that, and we have a, a lot of things you'll see here today that will help you uh, kind of get going with SQL. So. All right. <clears throat> All right, I think we've got a pretty good uh, percentage of votes in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, close the poll at this point. I will share this with you just so you can kind of see, you all can kind of see where everybody's coming from. So we have a large number of people with Query 400. We have uh, some still writing some programs and using interactive SQL, it's excellent. We have some SQL users, yay. <laughs> Excellent. All right. So moving on. How long does it take to go from a request for information to results? Well, there's a lot of variables in that in that sentence, right? In that question. How complicated is the database? How well is the database understood? How clear is the request to the actual needs? How many times is a requester changed or tweaked the request? And so on and so on and so on. I like this little humorous thing there. If you haven't heard it before, go ahead and take a moment to read it. <clears throat> but it, it defines how programmers think, right? They often think a little bit different. And this um, logic is hardwired into their brains to make their world simpler, right? If you program uh, a computer to add one plus one, it will return a two, unless there are other variables or other factors, you know, problems or bugs or something. <clears throat> but if you request what is one and one, don't be surprised if you get 11, right? You heard the difference, one plus one, one and one, okay? So basically your IT and your business users need to understand to a degree each other's viewpoint to avoid some common confusion. There we go. You may have heard this story. I first heard about it when I was back in college in the late 70s, early 80s. Uh, shampoo makers doubled, nearly doubled their sales by adding one word to their instructions. That word was repeat. <clears throat> Lather, rinse, repeat. 
what made me think of that and reminded me of that was the cycle of business requests that are required for programs to be written. Now you saw the percentage of people who, who are in our audience today who still write programs, okay? <clears throat> so this isn't so much funny <laughs> when you're responsible for doing this work and it added a lot of time to it, especially when you see that repeat at the top, right? Programmers should probably go on, yep, <clears throat> I know what you're talking about. Think of the circle as a clock, right? Representing the programmer's day or week. Be a lot of work. <clears throat> now, re uh, research, coding, compiling, delivering, getting changes, and repeat the process, right? So what happens if you eliminate some steps and reduce some others? Well, with SQL, the compile step is gone completely. Okay, suddenly there are gaps for other work to be done. <clears throat> Better yet, if you reduce the, the entire cycle, there's more time after the request is made. Developers research time, right? That will go down as the familiarity with their data and their environment goes up. They may already have a high, strong you know, familiarity with that. And the cycle will shrink even further. And changes that are made do not require a complete rewrite or a massive undertaking. And redelivery can be simple as well. Business users won't have to wait long for delivery. We have one client who uh, is a retail company and they told us that he reduced his time for four to five hours to write a complete uh, report in RPG from four to five hours to about 40 minutes, 45 minutes with SQL. Okay, for that's one report. And then by having these smaller cycles, you can fit more of these cycles into your day or week. You will be more productive and your users will have more information to guide their decisions. In SQL, it's simple to create items that are on the left-hand side here. <clears throat> okay, you can just read them down for yourself, prompts, calculated fields, and so on. Designers can save a huge chunk of time. The powerful and flexible design of SQL gives developers the strength to create the needs needed by their users while not increasing the time spent when the request changes. All of this adds power to the results without the corresponding increase in developers' time. We had another SQL client uh, out on the West Coast. They were just beginning with SQL, and she had previously gotten a request from her user community for a report. It had her a little bit stumped on how to go about getting that information, how to getting it all into one uh, report and going through it. And uh, the request was getting a little bit old on her desk because she was having trouble figuring it out. Well, um, with SQL, and I believe they were still in the trial phase when she started to, to do this, our free trial period, she was able to find the data and deliver the report that her users had been waiting to get. And of course, they're now a client, they're no longer a trial, because they actually acquired it. And then as for the delivery, you can schedule the results if you don't want to run them interactively. You can send the results as email, use FTP to move the results to a different system, create PC files on the IFS um, for the users to grab. Uh, you can save the definition and let the user, excuse me, direct the user to run it when they're ready, whether it's from a green screen, from a Windows tool, or from a browser. And remember with the runtime prompts, the user selects the data they need. Business users can use Excel add-in to run the definition and quickly have the results right in Excel that they need to make business decisions. Any or all of these can be easily done from one definition. And users' interactive selections like these with a browser or from Excel, developers can quickly change the definition and the users don't have to do anything. If they're running a shortcut, they just simply run it again, right? And they get the new definition, the new data. Often with SQL, we see what we call barriers, right? And you want to eliminate those, those barriers, right? Those hurdles. With SQL, your productivity will increase when programmers, designers, DBAs, power users, whoever's writing your SQL definitions, all use the same tool to access data from different sources. Those barriers to the data sources are eliminated. SQL scripts and script views 
Our method of compare, comparing and combining disparate data to gain new insights into what's going on within the organization or your industry and quickly spotting trends or shortcomings. So for example, if springtime is your normal busy time, but over the last several years, busy months are creeping into the summer, right? They're rolling back a little bit. You see that sales are rising, but your net profit hasn't kept pace. Are you buying enough to meet the demands? Okay. Does overtime or rush orders eat into your profits? Are your shipment contracts adequate to meet the needs of the summer months product movements? Ask the questions of the data. Let the data tell the story, regardless of the source. All right. So now we're going to do a, a brief demo. And I'm going to touch on um, the three main areas here, creating um, complex results, eliminating some of the barriers, and then increasing flexibility and sprinkle in some extras along the way. Okay, so let me flip over now to my desktop. Okay. So what we're seeing here, this is viewpoint, and I'm connected to our system called Wisdom. All right. Um, <clears throat> so I'm using some different libraries here and there's a couple different ways you can import your query definitions many of you said you're still using query so file import query gives us the opportunity to import several queries so i'm going to go out i'm <clears throat> going to choose some queries out of my query library i'll choose orders pay date and let's pick sales import them as views go ahead and click import the queries are left untouched we copy them they're now sql objects user space objects out on the eye you can run them right from here and immediately have a newer more modern look at your data right not your typical green screen but you know you can make changes to it as well and that's where the beauty of sql comes in you have that power to make those changes Okay, so you can see here I'm looking at Region 40 from Illinois, all the customers out here, um, much different stuff that we're looking at from this. But let's go ahead and make some changes to some of these views, all right? Let's go ahead and start a new one from scratch, though. <clears throat> now, it's going to look, it, we're going to build pretty much the same type of thing, right? So what I did is I hit the new button at the top. I'm all about easy. So I hit one button. I can type, I can copy and paste on the SQL tab. Most of our customers and me included like to use the GUI interface, okay? So I'm adding my file. So I'm going to my data library, which is my demo library. Okay, I also have a, a favorites area. So I can have some lists of just smaller number of files. I don't have so many out there. It's a nice, easy way to do the, a shorter list. Okay, and I'm going to pick a couple of files here, customer master, order header, order line, and part master. They all come in. SQL has an auto join feature. So we've told SQL when these files are brought in how to make the joins. My default is for inner join. So as far as the files and the linking of them, I'm already done, right? My default took it as an inner join. We told it which fields to link on. So that aspect is done. Now all I have to do is start choosing the fields out of the files that I want in my report. <clears throat> I'm going to pick them as I'm building it left to right. You don't have to do this. It's easily to, it's easy just to bring them down and move them uh, left and right, right? But I'm just going through, bringing them down just as I'm kind of saying, have a report in my head, I have a design in my head or on a piece of paper. And that's what I'm using to, to bring these fields down in. Okay, so I'm going a little bit back and forth. Sometimes I do it faster where I just bring them down as I see them and then move them left and right afterwards. Okay, so this is how we move them left or right. Just grab a little header there, click, drag, and drop. Okay, you can change column headings for this particular view. I'm going to change this to be city because that's what address three is. I'm going to make it city. I'm going to create a new or derived field calculated field and we're going to use our expression editor easy way to go about uh, getting that information <clears throat> okay so here's our expression editor make this a little bit bigger here perfect the top portion is our formula we give you some help areas here with some fields that you've selected from the file that are available as well as some special fields 
that uh, we've created that you may need to use. The function list is quite extensive. You can do things like case, which is conditional, uh, conditional logic, um, substring, concatenation, convert character to numeric, numeric to character, all the powerful things that you can do within here without doing multiple passes over your data. Okay, I'm going to do a relatively simple one here, right? I'm going to take um, the quantity ordered field, which is quano, and multiply it times the um, actual selling price on the on the order to get what's the, what we call the extended price right so there's my formula pretty simple formula but if i had to use any of those functions uh, i could have right any i can use parenthetic logic i can use a lot of different stuff that's where the power really comes in uh, it's recommended you name your field i'm going to give it an ibmi compliant name give it a column heading so what I, um, I'm building this one from scratch. Had I brought in the query, it would have looked very similar to this, and I would have just done some other little changes along the way. I can make more calculated or dried fields. They're all there. I'm going to set my sort order by region first, and by state, and by customer name. You get ascending or descending choices, right? As well as absolute value if you're looking at numbers. Okay, you get the sort orders one, two, three. You change one of those. The other ones will change to adjust and you make it go. Now let's go quick display and see what it looks like. Now this one isn't really that complex, right? I'm just pulling up transactional data out of the database. So I have my fields out here. You can see the column heading, um, all my regions, so all my states within there, the customer names, as well as their order information. Okay. <clears throat> You could do things like subtotals. I can add subtotals out there. So whatever, wherever the state breaks, maybe give it a, a subtotal or wherever the customer name or number changes, right? You can do that kind of things within here. Um, and you can save those with the view. So it'll always be there, right? So this is, this is how you build your view. Now I'm gonna put a where clause. It's way down at the bottom. You can see it's the, it says where down the lower left. I'm going to click on the button. Very similar expression editor as we had for the field. And this is the um, uh, state equal to, and I could hard code this like the query. Remember I said it was bringing in uh, Illinois, but I want to make it a prompt. Ampersand in front of a word makes it a prompt. So using the same word as the field name makes it a variable and we'll create it for you. Poof, ampersand state, we create it as a quoted string. All right, you can change the prompt text if you want, give it a default if you need to. The integrity test is kind of where some power comes in. Change your rule to a values list and put in some states, right? This is our state list. I can put in a handful of states, California, Texas, et cetera. Okay, now when I hit display, I get a drop down. For exactly those states. Okay, if you use a DB list, it's probably more popular because you can go against a view, SQL view, or a an IBMI physical file. Right? So I'm going to go to my data library, which is SEQ demo out here. I can choose views or files. I'm going to pick files. Okay, it's going to come up here in a second. There we go. There's my customer master, which is where the state uh, the list exists. Okay, now I'm going to tell it which field, which is the CSTTE customer state. And now when I display, the drop down shows me all of the states from my customer master. So it's just, we do a uh, select distinct under the covers, so we're just getting one entry per state, but there's all my states. I can't pick a state that I don't have a customer in, right? So I pick a state, run it, and there's all my customers from Texas in this example. Okay, same columns, just now different selection. So we saw how that uh, can be built. Now we're going to save this off. I'm going to put it in my library called uh, Business Intel. I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call it um, Orders 2, right? Because I already have that query I brought in called Orders. <clears throat> so I'm going to put this out here, Orders by State, right? You have 120 characters for the description, so 
you know, you could really go to town on that. Now it's saved. Now it can be run from green screen, from browser, from viewpoint, from Excel. It can be run from a lot of places. I've saved it. All I have to do is just, uh, you know, deliver it to the users. Refresh my library screen there. There it is right there. Like I said, it can be run from a lot of different places. And that one is relatively simple. There were four files, but it's relatively simple. Let's take a quick look at a couple of others that are already created with a little bit more of a complex SQL statement. This one's called cash flow, okay? Um, cash flow view, right? And it does, it uses what's called a union view, okay? So you see there's a little bit more complexity. Now, the union views start and end on the SQL tab, but there is a way to get to the files and fields tab. You just you know, have to select a particular select clause and step into it. Okay, subqueries. Developers out there will know what a subquery is. There's a lot of different subquery options. Um, I have just one example out here. I wanna see all my customers whose amount due is greater than the average of all of my customers amount due. Okay, so where we put that is in the where clause. So now I see when I run this one, a list of customers whose amount due is greater than my average amount due. Okay, so that's another, a little more complex type example. There's another one here called six months. Uh, just, it's in our uh, example library. Right, and you can see it's doing a lot of a lot of stuff here. A lot of calculated fields, some hidden fields, um, several files, a little bit more complex. I just want to show you this one and how you can do some of that uh, power and flexibility. Now, what happens if you have a remote database? I mentioned those hurdles in the in the PowerPoint, right? I mentioned those. So, what if you have those? Well, the administrator does a one-time connection to those databases, right? So I'm in Wisdom here. I'm going to this thing called Maintain Host Servers. Okay, now I'm set up as an administrator, so I can get into here. And here's all the ones that have been created. The ones at the top with the asterisk are the, the drivers that we uh, ship with it. Don't want to change those, but we can use them in the server type. Excel, Access, MySQL, Oracle, uh, SQL Server, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, I have this one here called AbleCorp 2005, just the name of it, could have called it Mike, All right? It's an SQL Server, giving it a user ID and password for access. The driver comes from the server type. Um, depending on your versions, it may have to be changed, but usually not. And then the path, where is this server in my environment? Okay, so I have that. And I set up all my remote connections this way at one time for the whole system. Then I start a view, just like I did a moment ago, hitting that green plus sign, right? I like to be on the files and fields. It's just me, all right? If I go to file properties though, I'm gonna change my database. There's all that list that I saw. I'm gonna go to Able Corp 2005. <clears throat> okay, it takes a moment to connect. Now we're out there. And we're in, as soon as it makes its connection, we're in SQL server that I've called AbleCorp. Now from here, it's pretty much the same thing. Same tool, same thing, right click in the gray area to add new files. I go to my uh, folder or my schema. I'm gonna pick DBO here. There's all my tables. There's a whole bunch of list of tables that I wanna get at, right? I'm gonna bring in, um, couple of them here, customers, and hold down my control key and I'll pick um, orders. There it is. And click open. Now notice I don't have auto join set up for these files, so I have to do it manually. Click and drag. I can do that. That's not hard. As long as I can see the two fields I need to link on, click and drag field to field. Okay. So that's the same regardless of your database. Selecting your fields is the same, regardless of your database. Your where clause, same, regardless of the database, okay? There might be some difference in the functionalities because, for example, SQL servers don't do dates, they do timestamps, those types of things generally. So, you know, there might be some a little bit of difference in the functionality of some of the, some of the options available in your functions area, but it allows you to bring that in, okay? So now I'm gonna to go to a script. I'm actually gonna use a script view because this one shows how I can bring in data from different systems 
and bring it all into one. So a script view is meant to be displayed or saved as a physical file or something like that. So you see out here, I'm doing a mon message, right? It's global, so I probably should use the specific one. Why am I doing that? Because I'm deleting my work file before I start. If it happens not to exist, you'll get that error, right? Programmers know that. My first one, I'm executing a view called bear cuss which is built over my db2 data on the ibmi okay and it's going to put the data that it selects into my work file called combo f then i'm running an able cut able cuss over an sql server and i'm going to run a cook cuss over oracle data and then the last one's going to run a fourth view called uh, combo now, this is just one way to do it. There are other ways to do it. I could have ended up with three separate files. The last view could have um, combined them all together, right, in joins. Could have done it that way. Just different ways to go about it, okay? So when you do have a script, when you have a regular script, your options are run script and submit script. I mentioned that one was a script view because when I right click on a script view, the options are same as a view, right? So the 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 citing factor is, is this view going to be displayed on the screen or needed to be saved as a PC file or something like that on the fly, then you can do a uh, script view, okay? For those of you SQL customers out there, there were, there were several. Contact support if you really wanna kind of go through the difference of those. <clears throat> but it's pretty, yeah, you have to use this command called IC return, and you do have to tell the script it is a script view, all right? There's like a toggle when you go in. So now there's a step button in these scripts. So if I hit the uh, run script, it's just gonna run through and just ma march all the way through. If I hit the step, it's gonna re require me to hit the step button each time. This one, um, the last one here has a prompt on how I want it sorted. Now you can see it flying through relatively quickly. Okay, step mode is good when you're first building this because it'll stop at each line that it's actually executing and you'll see the messages down at the bottom. It'll pause so you'll know if it's good. And there's my data. I got Bear, Able, and Cook. I can see my customers from three different systems all right here in one script. Now the data, don't get hung up on the data, right? The data is data. <clears throat> it happens to be very similar, but the, the actual Bear is DB2, Able is Microsoft SQL Server, and Cook was Oracle, okay? So we had one tool, brings it all together. The user would then just run the script view and they see the data. This could be financial data, could be production data, could be you know time clock data, could be any, any type of data, all right? So what else can we do here from our um, stuff? Well, we talked about um, scheduling and sending views out, right? <clears throat> Let's say that you want to uh, send something out the uh, um, email, right? I have this uh, couple of reports out over here, couple, so a couple of views. Let's take this first one called sales, okay? Pretty easy, right? Right click on it. I, of course, I can display it. I'm doing this interactive, but I wanna schedule it. So I could say save results, right? But if I wanna schedule this as an email, I come down here to email. I put in who I'm emailing it to, and I put in my uh, email address, right? If I have an advanced eSend, I can even just use my name, which is set up within eSend. I can give it a subject, of course, CC and BCC. I can put in a message. I can pick my um, uh, format, the, the attachment type. Excel is what I wanna use here, but I can use text, PDF, et cetera. Now there's the schedule button. If I want to schedule this, if I click OK, it's going to send it off right now if I hit schedule. Now, I have robot schedule on this system, Wisdom, right? So that's what comes into focus. If I don't, if I didn't, IBMI job scheduler comes in. So you just make the entry, choose Monday at 6 a.m. It's going to make an entry right in robot schedule. Okay. Now, once that's made, you have to go to that tool to change it or delete it, but at least we made the entry. And you can block that if it's a concern from IT, if you wanna block for your users from scheduling things, that can be done as well, okay? So it's real easy. You can go to those tools and schedule stuff as well. You can run things from shortcuts, right? Here's a dashboard running from the browser, running it right from the browser. 
and you can see it's asking me for my credentials. Who am I? All right. And now I can see it's running. I've run this one here called Dashboard. And it's basically a dashboard of buttons. There's no data on here, right? But that's just the way I designed it, kind of like a menu. So I could pick individual views, which I've set up as, as asterisks at the bottom or dashboards or other views I put up at the top. You have some options here. I can go out to uh, other websites with buttons. All of these buttons can do things. So the button within a dashboard can be pretty powerful and you can click those and then you can um, you know, send it off. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, that's pretty much all of the demo. So <clears throat> we saw how fast and easy it is can, to make or, or import your queries, right? Adding calculations to the definition so the user doesn't have to add them each time like in Excel or something, right? Uh, saves time and it's more accurate. Empowering the user to making information easy and flexible. They will be relying less on IT for the reports and IT there can be more productive. The more you know, of course, about your database and data relations, the faster it'll be. But as that cycle begins, okay, you want to get to, you see a little uh, quadrants over there, you want to get to the high impact, low effort. You saw how easy it was relatively to build um, a SQL definition, okay? Now, before we get to the question, so I have one more polling question here. Bear with me just a second. Got to choose it and launch it. <clears throat> okay, just take about a minute here to do this. If you'd like to see more, uh, go ahead and click the yes, reach out to me or the maybe or not at this time, but contact me in the future. Yeah, make your choice. Go ahead and do that. And like I said, we'll wait for a few minutes here to do it as I start to look at some of the questions that have come in. All right, we've got a couple of good questions. So, and y'all are answering the questions pretty good too. So, awesome. Again, I'll give it a few more uh, moments here before I close the poll. So, go ahead and uh, make your selection. And, like I said, it gives me time to look at the questions. <laughs> Excellent. All right, I'm going to go ahead and uh, close the poll at this time. Excellent. Thank you all for that. All right, now let's take a look at the question. Uh, we've got a, a couple questions from one of our existing SQL customer. Uh, what is the latest release of viewpoint in SQL? We just came out a week or so ago with SQL 11.13, I believe it is, yeah, 11.13, that's for SQL on the host, and then the viewpoint would be 11 dot, and then the middle number is always the year that it was released, so dot 19, and then the last number is the um, date, and I believe it was 212, so it'd be 11 dot 19 dot 212. Okay. If you're not current, you want to go out to the community portal, you can download your latest versions out there. If you don't have access to community portal, or if you've never accessed it before, contact our support line. They'll set you up on that. And then you can get, um, you can log a ticket on there, log a, ca a case on there. You can um, download your information. You can do a lot of things from there. Uh, another question, is the browser access part of standard release or is it an add-on? For our older customers, um, it may have been an add-on. You can add it at any time. When you upgrade your SQL and you keep it current, you automatically will load those into, um, you'll automatically get the web interface piece. It's just a matter of licensing it, okay? So if you don't have a license to SQL web interface, contact your account rep. Yeah, you can send me an email. You see my thing there. I'll pass it to your account rep. We can get you a temporary code so you can try it. And like I said, if you're current, you have everything you need. We'll create that. Um, so that's that's a good point. Uh, a lot of our new licenses do include the bundle, which includes the web interface. But a lot of our older customers didn't have that. Can a SQL script run from um, a Windows folder shortcut? Yes, it can. 
the shortcuts can run a script. Now, again, keep keep in mind what the script is doing, script or script view, but they can uh, be run from a shortcut. Um, I've run quite a few from there, actually, build some files and do that kind of stuff. So, um, so yeah, absolutely. Good questions. I like these coming in. Um, uh, showed the dashboard, the one with all the buttons on it. Does that come with is that part of the product? Yes, it is. There's there's not really too many add-ons anymore for those of you who are not SQL customers. Um, you get the bundle, you get everything out there. The remote database access, the, the dashboard, the Excel interface. Um, the only thing, like I said, for our older customers is the web interface piece, but if you get the bundle for, for non-SQL customers coming on board, you get the full browser access. Now, there's no design capabilities on the browser side, but it's a great way for your users to run things. You don't have to keep the thick client uh, installed out there, okay? And um, do we have to build any metadata to create the dashboards? No, you don't. There's no metadata. There's no data warehouse required. If you do have a data warehouse or metadata, we can access that. I always think of metadata in the older terms of work files. So if you build work files, to kind of either archive some of your data or do that, you can use SQL to access that data. And that can be um, you know, easily easily built. So there's no metadata required. We go right against your your data files. And the data could be operational files too. Some of our uh, customers use SQL to go against some operational, some help systems tools that um, create physical files worth of, worth of data. And can I install the GUI, the GUI piece on any number of PCs? Yes, you can. We don't care whose PC it gets installed on. It's really tied to your host license on that. So, um, it's, it all goes back to your host license. So whatever license you have on there, if you have a user-based license versus a, an unlimited. All right, we're a little bit over our time here, but I did want to wrap it up to free everybody's time here. So um, are there any other questions? Um, I'm going to leave this open for uh, just a moment here uh, when, I, when I'm wrapped up. In case you have a few more questions, I'll reach out to you privately uh, via email. And uh, I want to thank everybody for joining us. And um, that concludes our webinar for today. Thank you and have a good day.